nothing changeable. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that true, Christoph? <laughs> ah. Mm hmm. Um. Hmm. Well, tell me something I don't know. <laughs> hmm. I did some uh, woodwork, woodwork. <laughs> for my refurb refurbishment in my oh. room. <laughs> oh yeah. What kind of woodwork? Like the floor or the? Uh, yes, I prepared to make a floor. Wow, this guy, this guy is a real handyman. <laughs> you can do everything like a true Polish man. <laughs> yeah. He's a plumber, he's a carpenter, he's a gardener, and a programmer. <laughs> <laughs> Multi talent. Multi talent. A Renaissance man. Yes, we got to get him into the arts, though. You should start painting. <laughs> you have to be in Poland if you want to endure. <laughs> Ah, uh, okay. So you have to be in order to endure. Mm -hmm. Hello, Servet. Hello, Anthony. Hello, Cheche. Hello. Hello, Servet. Yes. What's new with you? What's new? Not much. Mm -hmm. There was a few things. Yes, yes, so. <laughs> What's that, Servet? Tell us, Cheche, you might have something new. <laughs> All right. I'm trying to pull it out of it. What's new? Tell me. Nothing. <laughs> uh -huh. So, Servat, what were you saying? No, you know, I study sometimes Spanish using some applications. And in one of the applications, there's a man, you know, there are pictures. Who looks exactly like you? <laughs> what is it? Is it oh, there's a guy in the pictures that looks like me? Yes. Ah, you should send me one. <laughs> I want to see what this guy looks like. I want to see if he really. Maybe it's me. I'm also a male model. No, I'm not really. No, no. That's a lie. That was a lie. Two truths and a lie. That was a lie. Whenever I see, you know, they as a repetition, they show the same pictures all the time. Whenever they sh show the same picture, I remember you. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Um. So what? Uh, what else is new with you, Sebet? I haven't seen you. You've been studying Spanish now. How many languages do you study? Just two: Spanish Just... and English. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool. And how is your Spanish? My Spanish, I found a website they are teaching uh, and you know, memorize. They have some courses. I found a course for Spanish, 1,500 basic words. Mm -hmm. I started learning some new words there. Okay. Because I'm slowly getting familiar with the grammar. I can pretty much understand most of the grammar. Not maybe mm -hmm. all of them, but basic grammar, enough to have basic conversation. Mm -hmm. But my vocabulary isn't good, that's a few very basic. And that's why I found this course. Mm -hmm. After memorizing all of them, mm -hmm. I will go to a very good step. All right, so, you got, so you're going to learn the vocabulary first, and then you're going uh, to organize it into, vocab uh, into grammar after that? That you're... Your mission? Yeah, yeah. I already study grammar. Liliana teaches us grammar on Sundays. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I know some like some basic structures. Conjugation. To, yeah, basic construction. Maybe not all of them. Probably, I guess the subjectives are difficult. They say, or they might be different than English. They say they use it all the time. Mm -hmm. I don't know imperatives as well, but other conjugations like how to make. Uh, how to structure a sentence, question, or something in different tenses. Mm -hmm. These are not difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Spanish is one of the more one of the easier languages to learn. So, but it's an important language. It's the like the second or third most popular language in the world. So, yes. it's a good language to learn. A good language to learn. 
and there are also some people from Brazil and Italian I join the classes with those people they are they can understand even though they are beginners in the language right because can... yeah Portuguese and Italian are very very close to Spanish you know. Yeah. So by learning Spanish, maybe I will be able to understand even Italian and Portuguese a little bit. You will. You'll be able to read it. You probably already will be able to read it a little bit, especially Italian. Um, I mean, like Italian and Spanish are closer than some dialects of other languages. Like maybe in Indonesian, you know, or in Arabic or something. Sometimes the dialects are so different that they're almost like different languages, whereas Italian and Spanish are very close. You know, Kazakhstan... Mm -hmm. They speak Russian and Kazakh Turkish. Mm -hmm. yeah, Turkish yeah, Russian is uh, their second language. Kazakhstan. They right. also speak Turkish, but if I just see, I haven't listened to Kazakh Kazakh people speaking Turkish. But when I hear for the first time, I met on people on Kolingo, it is different. Not easy to understand if you haven't. If you don't have experience with talking to these people, it will be different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kazakh is a di is is considered a different language than Turkish. It's not considered a dialect. It's considered another language, even though it's in the same family. Well, here they say Kazakh Turkish. Really? The same. Really? Yeah. And what I've uh, everything I've looked at, including like you know like you know linguistic things or like Wikipedia will cite things. Mm -hmm. uh, Kazakh is its own separate language. It's Definitely a Turkish, a Turkic, uh, you know, family language, but it's not. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's that's the thing with linguists. Like sometimes they have a disagreement on, mm -hmm. is it a is it a dialect or is it a language? You know, and like there's lots of different yes. instances around the world. You know, Mandarin and Cantonese are those different languages? Or are they dialect? Yeah. Are you know, so uh, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, I could talk about this for hours. Uh, so anyway, it's good to see you again. Yes, thank you so much. Um, we uh, we our travel class today is about backpacking. Um, backpacking actually has a few different possible definitions. Um, you see, backpackers. Uh, there's like urban backpacking, and then there's like, you know, like uh, hiking and stuff, and like camping and outdoor backpacking. And this class will be more about the outdoor style. So if you like that kind of thing. Um, but um, either way, um, this will talk about the kind of things you'll need to get started with backpacking, no matter what. You know. And uh, so that should be interesting. Have any of you ever done backpacking before? <laughs> Almost every time. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe not backpacking. <laughs> I have different uh, approach to this <laughs> packing. Uh, I have a uh, standard uh, bag uh, that uh, you, you can go to your flight and uh, without, uh, how to say, Without checking your bag? Oh, yes. Uh, you don't have to do that. You have only handbag. Yep. Uh, and I have uh, the underwear, mm -hmm. some uh, T-shirts, uh, socks, and other. And uh, I don't know, sweatpants or track pants? Sweatpants, yeah. Sweatpants, yes. Mm -hmm. And this is it. <laughs> oh, wow. And the rest of this I buy uh, in the place uh, I travel to. Really? So, like I don't know what I don't know. Um, everything you shampoo you can buy. Everything you can buy. Yeah, that's true. So, but so, what do you mean though? When you're done with your trip, do you bring all that stuff back with you, and you have a big bag on your way back? No, I don't you have. Uh, uh, I buy some stuff disposable, disposable. or small amounts, like uh, small soaps, yeah. uh, like this. Uh, you can buy. Yes, uh, we have the same philosophy in to travel. Then I do the same thing. Um, no matter what kind of trip I go on, if whether it's a one-day trip or a two-day trip or a three-week trip. I bring a backpack and just a little back, a small backpack, and that's everything I bring. 
So, um, and I have I keep the little travel things in there and a couple of pairs of clothes and stuff. And that's it. That's all. I and do. it's easier to check in in your plane. Yes, I hate check. Yeah, I don't like checking my bag. I like to have my bag with me because then uh, there could be another. There could be a problem in the future that can go wrong. They could lose your bag. I like to have my bag with me, so it's my responsibility. Uh, and in Europe, if you have only your handbag, uh, you can check in by internet. Right. Exactly. It's great. It's uh, very convenient. Yes, uh, we have the same same ideas. That's what I always do. Good. Hello, Ken. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. How's it going? Yeah, I got a problem of connection, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I could make it. <laughs> oh, okay, that's all right. We all have it from time to time. Uh, how was your day? Mm, oh, same old, same old. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I even ask that question? No, I just the same old, same old. Sorry. <laughs> Tell me something. Tell me something I don't know. Tell me something interesting. Tell me something. I'm. Uh, 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 maybe you know. Uh, I got uh, Paul McCartney's new album. Ah, it's called. New. New. Called the new. Yeah. <laughs> Have you listened to it? Yeah. I, yeah. Kind of. Uh, single song is typical Beatles type song, and but another song is uh, a bit edgy. 80s. As well as melodious, but a bit edgy guitar sound or edgy sound effect. Yeah, uh huh. That's been a yeah. that's been a trend lately. It's the 80s yes. style mm -hmm. it's been popular in the last 10 mm -hmm. years. Yeah. Uh, is it? Do you think it's good, or do you still have to listen to it some more? To, to uh, since uh, you know, I'm gonna go to the concert. I I'm, I'm kind of pre I'm prepared. <laughs> so that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Well, I'll have to listen to it. Uh, let me know how that is. Uh, I, I, Rolling Stone gave it a very good review. Maybe I should mm -hmm. uh, maybe I should read that review mm -hmm. for Coleco. Compare with previous album and your Starbucks label album. Uh, this new album is b better than that, in my opinion. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. Uh, that's what. Yeah, I think that's what. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what Rolling Stone said too. So, uh, yeah, so cool. I might have to check that out. Um, we were talking about... Uh, Stuff and I were talking about uh, 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 what we travel with when we take a plane somewhere. Um, and Christoph and I both just take a backpack. Well, Christoph is even more minimal than me. He just takes an empty backpack, basically, and then buys what he needs at his location, at the destination. So that's very minimal. It's good. If you have too many big bags and stuff, that's then you have to carry them everywhere you go, and you're responsible for all that. It's too much, too much of a hassle. Yeah, and uh, I had some uh, jacket to travel. It's uh, uh, with some smart lining. Mm -hmm. You can uh, detach this lining, uh, wear only this lining, like you know. It's uh, some jacket uh, to travel. Ah, very good. That's uh, useful. A uh, jacket that has extra lining that you can take off, make it warm or, or less warm, whatever you need. Good. Um, Servet. Yes. Uh, describe the most incredible experience you ever had in the outdoors. In the outdoors, mm -hmm. yes, I, I once went on a vacation. It was out of Istanbul, I guess. Um, and, uh, it's kind of hiking. Mm -hmm. We went there to do picnic and hiking at the same time. Uh, oh. There is a valley and. On the two sides of the valley, you have some kind of rocky areas. But the more you walk, on the area gets steeper. Mm -hmm. And in the middle, you have some sort of river 
uh, seeping. Mm -hmm. So we were walking around there. When you need, you need to try. Sometimes you had some kind of little obstacles you need to climb. Mm -hmm. We turned back, we made some barbecue. We were in a group, even we had a, we even find a little kind of pool, natural pool. Mm -hmm. uh, some people got in the pool, I did as well because I like it. Yes. So I like this kind of outdoor stuff, you hiking, you climbing with people who do a picnic at the same time. Nice. It's a good experience. Yeah, that sounds really cool. So, um, you said this is near Istanbul? Yes, it's outside of Istanbul. I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Like, okay. And was it one like one day or was it more than one day? Just one day? We went morning and turned back night. Okay, so no camping. All day. Yeah, no camping. Mm -hmm. okay. Interesting. Cool. Uh, what about you, Ken? Have you ever had any interesting outdoors experiences? Inter uh, I used to do snorkeling. Snorkeling, okay. Yeah, so the you know kind of under the ocean, the scenery of inside the ocean is the different world. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I feel like I'm floating, uh, you know, kind of <laughs> like I'm flying in the ocean. Yeah, yeah. kind of floating, flying in the ocean. And but this area is not tropical, so I don't see some, some colorful. Sometimes very colorful fish is there is here, but usually not so colorful. Fish fish are not not colorful, but I see the kind of uh, high you know, the secret beautiful garden under the sea, ah. made of rock, seaweed, fish, and sand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. Very yeah. Cool. Mm, to find more colorful fish, maybe you'll have to go snorkeling in a koi pond. Mm, yes, <laughs> or Chetje's place. Or in Chetje, uh, <laughs> yeah, you might find some beautiful fish down there to snorkel there. Yes, definitely. Uh, speaking of Chetje, what about you? What is your most uh, incredible experience in the outdoors? The great outdoors, as they say. Not much, maybe. I I just remember about uh, my first time <laughs> leaving my country and yeah and many stuff that I must bring <laughs> like uh, I also backpack that and bring my heavy uh, uh, oh my god luggage yes luggage. my heavy luggage a lot of stuff. Not only me, my friend also bring heavy luggage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, girls always complicated for stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's the stereotype, yes. Like we bring like, everything. Little girl brings this huge bag. It's like feels like it's a million pounds. Yeah. Even million. though I'm tomboy, but I'm still uh, wear. <laughs> oh. Bring everything. <laughs> uh, what about uh, what about outdoors uh, experience? Do you like outdoor stuff, like hiking and swimming and climbing and camping and things like that? Mm, nothing really. <laughs> I about, don't remember. <laughs> back home, did you do hiking? In Penang, or, or yeah, yeah, just. Just walking, maybe. Just, just walking around. Yeah, so like hiking in yeah. the hills. Mm -hmm. Cool. And yeah, what's the most, do you remember any particular moment, uh, any interesting uh, stories from hiking in the in the hills in Indonesia? The hills, yes. Um, it's easy to find waterfalls. And uh, when I'm hiking in the hills, I also can see uh, the sea. Mm, nice. Mm. Beautiful. Very cool. Uh, and Krzysztof, what about you? Mm, I think uh, my first time when I traveled without parents but with my pr friends. Mm -hmm. mm. And where'd you go? Which uh, one? So we went um, to Gdańsk with uh, our uh, tent. <laughs> oh, really? 
So you went camping in Gdańsk? Uh, with outskirts. In the outskirts, yeah. In the outskirts, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and what? So what did you do? You just was it one night or two nights or what? Did you? No, no, it was a uh, whole week. A whole week. And so what did you do? just? Did you make campfires? Did you go hiking or like? Yeah, campfires. Uh, um, uh, swimming, mm -hmm. <laughs> or something like this. <laughs> swimming? Were you next to a lake, or the ocean, or? Mm, uh, uh, both. <laughs> both, really? Wow. Yeah. Were you biking too? Did you have your bicycle with you too? Uh, no, uh, we didn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. That sounds really cool. A week, yeah, a week long trip with your friends. And uh, kind of have some freedom and get away from the from work and city life and experience the great outdoors. It could be a nice thing. Uh, my, uh, I'll just tell you really quickly. My best outdoor experience is definitely it would have to be um, uh, whitewater rafting. You guys know about whitewater rafting? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mountains uh, like a white, uh, white stream. <laughs> like what? Uh, I heard some white uh, waves. Yes, yeah. Well, if you're on a fast river with like uh, with the river, the water's going fast and it's going over rocks and stuff, and the, the water starts getting white on certain parts. Uh, so like rough, rough water, and you can raft on these these waves. And uh, and that's called white water rafting. So this is what it looks like. Wow. White water rafting. I did this in the oh. Grand, in the Grand Canyon. Oh, wow. Uh, actually, let's let's type in. Uh, let me type in Grand Canyon. Let's see what happens. There's no safety belt on the boat. No safety belt. You could fly right out. <laughs> so I did that. Yeah, I did this. Here's a and sometimes it's not always busy. Sometimes it's nice and quiet like this, wow. and it is the easily the most uh, the most uh, amazing uh, outdoor experience I've ever had. Just unbelievable and beautiful. And it takes like two weeks to go through the whole Grand Canyon on these little boats. And you camp on the side on the side, and you go on little hikes and see this gorgeous. You're always surrounded by the most beautiful scenery in the world, and um, it's very hot. Uh, because you're in the desert, but the water is very, very cold, so it's it's uh, it's got both hot and cold. It's amazing. So if you ever come to the United States and you have lots and lots of time and money, <laughs> I would recommend that. My grandfather, um, when I was you know, when I was a kid, let me do that with him, and it was it's great. So that um, the most extreme rafting I ever heard was uh, rafting by the Pacific Ocean. Oh really? Uh, yeah. Wh what part? Where in the Pacific? Uh, through from uh, Japan uh, to U.S. What? Yeah. On a raft? On a little boat, like a rubber boat, like? Uh, the... No, no. Uh, they built some special uh, boat uh, uh, because uh, they had to took uh, with them. Uh, bring them with them a lot of uh, food yeah. because it uh, was a uh, few months. <laughs> what? Yeah. Like a, were they like rowing? Like, uh, yeah. Like, for like, what? How many people? Two, two people. Two people? On a, how big was the raft? Mm, normally. <laughs> what? They had some uh, uh, machine to make... Uh, Water? Uh, tap water. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, because you can't drink the ocean water. No, no. Well, they had some machine and they uh, make this water by this machine is uh, uh, osmosic. <laughs> uh -huh. Some machine. Uh huh. Hmm. Wow. Now that's a feat. You ever heard that word? Yeah. A feat. Like challenge. Yes, a feat, a great uh, challenge, a great uh, 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 accomplishment. 
great accomplishment. You've yeah, you've yeah, it's a challenge that you've overcome as a feat. Like I'll show you this amazing skill or feat or whatever. Yes. Wow. That's interesting. I never heard about that. Kind of like you heard about the woman that swam from Cuba to Florida and she was like sixty five years old or something. Mm -hmm. It happened last month. Um let's talk about uh emphasizers for a second here. Um and we'll learn about um all the different emphasizers in English. So um Servet, will you read for us? Yes. First, we use adverbs to emphasize our sentences. When we put an emphasizer before a word, we are giving it a greater force or certainty. You can think about emphasizers like grammatical muscles. They make a word stronger. Some common emphasizers are really, very, so, and extremely. He is an extremely talented musician. He is exceptional. Sarah really doesn't want to go to the party. She feels strongly about it. I am so happy you came. You want your listener to understand the depth of your feeling. Look at the emphasizers. What words are they emphasizing? How does the sentence change if you remove the emphasizers? Yeah, so um, pick a, pick one of these sentences and, and do that. Remove one of the emphasizers. Pick a sentence and, and remove an emphasizer. And then read it. Yes, he is, an, he is a talented musician. Mm -hmm. So how is that different? When you say he's a talented musician, it's like... He is a talented musician like anyone else, any other musician. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what's an extremely talented musician? How is that different? You say extremely, you feel like he is an outstanding. He, is, he outstands mm -hmm. from the group. Mm -hmm. Right, he's ex outstanding. He's not just, a, not just any professional, but even uh, the cream of the crop. There's another good... A uh, word. And the crop. Cream of the crop. It's the very, very, very best. Extremely talented. So, all right. Um, Ken, will you read the second one, please? Okay, uh, second, we use some adverbs of amplify in our sentences. Amplifiers enlarge a word's meaning. Some common amplifiers are common uh, completely, totally, undoubtedly, and absolutely. I completely understand that uh, there is you understand every aspect. Undoubtedly, the rocket will explode. Uh, the speak, uh, speaker knows without a doubt. I, I totally made a mistake. You take a full responsibility. Look at the amplifiers. How are they different from emphasizers? Emphasizers all have a similar meaning. Amplifiers are more complex to some extent. Emphasizers are interchangeable. Amplifiers are not. Uh, right. So why? Um, um, how are they? Why are these different than uh, the emphasizers? <coughs> I think totally and complete, completely is somewhat interchangeable. That's true. I think completely and totally are very similar. But how come are they? Why are they not exchangeable with these? Mm. What's the difference between? How can we? They're both. Um, they are both uh, intensifiers. But what's the difference between emphasizers and uh, and amplifiers? Like undoubtedly, how is undoubtedly different than very? Or any of these? 
just let's use uh, really. Let's let's use the word really. How is really different than uh, completely? Uh, in in case of so, maybe so uh, re reinforce the meaning, or mm -hmm. the meaning of uh, after noun. Right. So, and the, I don't know the really really has meaning mm -hmm. of real. Well, there's there's <clears throat> I shouldn't have said really. Well, I I guess really works, but um, really um, in this context, really as an emphasizer doesn't really change the meaning it it just makes it it just intensifies it, mm. it just it's the same as so in this mm. context mm. so you could actually replace this with so oops Sarah. well not really Sarah so doesn't want to it's not really good grammar but uh, really works best for this particular one but, uh, but you can you can replace this though mm. it's a really talented image Except for extremely is a little bit more. So for me, the difference here, undoubtedly, it's not just makes it doesn't just make the next part bigger. It explains it more. It's undoubtedly is without a doubt. Like you can't dis you know you can't disagree. Mm -hmm. That's not the same as these up here. This is just like makes it bigger. So um, stuff like that. So it just it's more more complex. It's more accurate and it does it changes it something I totally made a mistake not just half I not a little mistake but in every aspect of the so. okay so oh is that the uh, picture of those guys uh, it's different but uh, almost the same mm -hmm. uh-huh is that a Brit and an American <laughs> I see they have some sponsors there. Interesting, interesting. I would not, I would not want to do that. I'd be scared to do that. <laughs> uh, I'm not scared to, to do white rotter rafting in the crazy, crazy rapids of the of the Colorado River and the Grand Canyon. But I would be scared to be way out in the open in the middle of the ocean in a raft. I'd be very scared. <laughs> mm. I have, you have to uh, have great stamina. Yes, great stamina. Good word. Uh, okay, so let's talk. Let's move on here to down toners. Uh, Cheche, will you read for us? Third, we use down toners to decrease a word's effect. When we put the down toner before a word, we are reducing the strength of the that word. Some common down toners are slightly, somewhat less, rather almost nearly, and kind of. I kind of understand Spanish. You don't fully understand. Sara is somewhat of an expert when it comes to politics. Something prevents her from being a complete expert. Perhaps she is not a political professional, but she is knowledgeable. I feel slightly full after eating the first hamburger. You are a little full, but not that much. You can probably eat another hamburger. Look at the down toners. How does each one reduce the strength of the word it modifies? How does the meaning change if you remove the down toner? Okay, so as it said, um, pick one of these sentences and tell me and, and answer that question. Pick one of these sentences and answer that. Like, let's look at the first sentence. How does kind of reduce the strength, and how does the meaning change if you remove kind of? So maybe I totally understand Spanish. Mm -hmm. Fully understand Spanish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you just say, I understand Spanish, so I think, okay, so let's have a conversation. And they're like, wait, 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 not <laughs> I just... <laughs> Just a little understand, yeah, not not totally. Uh huh. Yeah. So it brings it down a notch. Down toners are different than they're like the opposite of intensifiers or uh, emphasizers. I, I meant emphasizers. 
emphasizers do the opposite, right? I totally understand, or, I, or not totally is a is a, uh, is a amplifier, but I uh, so it's kind of the opposite of totally, kind of the opposite of really, which is an emphasizer. So these these bring it down. These make it less intense, right? Uh, all right, and now let's, this is kind of almost like a speaking and writing tip. What's your stuff? What you read? Fourth, remember that intensifiers can help your sentences sound powerful or more exact. But like any good thing, it's possible to overuse them. Read this paragraph. How would you fix it? I get really excited when I work out math problems. At first, they seem really difficult, but then I think really hard and my brain starts really working on the numbers. After a while, it really doesn't seem difficult at all. I really think that more people should really enjoy math. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Too much. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Are you sure about that? Really? <laughs> I don't believe you. So it's obvious what they're saying here. Um. Um. We don't. You know. We don't want to ever overuse anything in life. <laughs> Is what they said here. Like some people overuse. You know a lot. You know? Uh, oh, I do. Everyone, yeah. <laughs> American. Oh, yeah. We say, you know. Really, man. <laughs> You've got to be mean with me, man. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, what else? Do, what else do you hear from us teachers? Like, I bet the teachers at Kalingo overuse things all the time. Let's get down the grammar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's get down the ground. That's definitely not me. <laughs> I would be like, all right, let's stop talking about grammar. <laughs> and sometimes, um, <laughs> um, a lot. Um, uh, oh, oh, you know what I say a lot? I say, well, let's see. Do I, I say that? Let's see. Do, I, do you ever hear me say that? Mm, Maybe I don't. I'd say that. I don't know. That's a common expression. Let's see. And of course, so. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, I say that a lot. So, <laughs> I say that all the time. So, what are, what are other words? Okie dokie. <laughs> Okie dokie, yeah. Do I say that? Probably. Another teacher. <laughs> no, you don't say it. But another have, teacher, yes. I have said okie dokie, but. I don't know what is okie dokie before. <laughs> when he uh, said it, and I asked. You know what it is now? The yes, Australian, I know. The Australian teacher, Alan, always yeah. says, how are you going? How are you and going? I, yes, instead of how is it going. Really? How are you yes. going? And I said, I've never I heard anyone say that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you need an adverb to answer that question. How are you going? Very slowly. How are uh, you going? And uh, he is uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, fair enough. Fair mm -hmm. enough. I say that sometimes, not very often, but I've said it in Kalingo. Uh, fair enough. If somebody says something, um, that's a very specific reason why I say fair enough. Um, if you prove a point, if you prove a point to me, then I might say, okay, fair enough. Yeah. Like, uh, like you didn't do anything last weekend? Well, I had to study. I would study for my exams. I'm like, okay, fair enough. Fair enough. I say that sometimes. Um, right on. I don't think I say that much in Kalingo, but it means like cool. Like, how are you doing? Yeah. Oh, I'm doing great. Right on. Right on. Is is it still fashionable or old fashion? Right on. Right on. I think it came from the 60s. Yeah, yeah, right on used to be popular in the 60s and 70s. Then it went away, and now it's popular again. Okay. So you say right on. It's cool mm -hmm. again. So sometimes things are cool for a while, then they go away. Sometimes they come back. Mm -hmm. So all these little expressions. And wow. you said 
He said, how was your day a lot? Yeah, how, <laughs> yeah, how was your day? Of course I said, because <laughs> I really want to know, but you guys never tell me. Or you do. <laughs> say it's the most boring day in the whole world. Just so-so. Nothing happened. Send me <laughs> what, what they can say about <laughs> same, same. <laughs> like, well, I did my laundry, washed the dishes, I watched a movie, I chatted with my friends online, you know. I don't, it doesn't have to be like, wow, I won a million dollars. I don't expect anything crazy. We haven't even talked about backpacking yet in this class. I'm sorry. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's check out this article. And since we definitely won't have time to read the whole thing because it's really late, I'll share you the link. Excuse me, I will share the link with you. Um, this actually comes from the most popular outdoors uh, store in the United States. I think it's the most popular. And uh, uh, you can probably order some stuff from them online. But this is not really an advertisement exactly. It's more just uh, tips. Well, now, of course, it's kind of like subliminal advertising. <laughs> but it's okay. It's still... Very good advice. So, backpacking for beginners. Um, let's start with number one. Pick a partner. So don't pack back alone. They say it's best to have someone with you. Team up with an experienced friend. Knowledgeable company is good for peace of mind, and sh and a shared bass and a shared backpacking experience is usually more fun than going solo. Uh, a been there, done that companion can accelerate your learning curve by sharing wisdom gained in the field. And, uh, or you can join a group, a small group of friends. Uh, group trips are memory makers. Most backcountry areas limit groups to 12. I see a couple of phrases and idioms here. Peace of mind. What does that mean? Good for peace of mind. It's kind of literal, actually. Mm, advice. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, this is good advice. Um, but peace of mind is relax. Uh, knowledge. Yeah, almost more like comfort in knowing that uh, everything's gonna be okay. Well, it's more literal, like peace of mind. But, you know, like your your mind is settled and at ease. It's like oh, okay. I'm not as nervous anymore because I have a friend who knows about this with me and he can help me or she can help me. And so then you have a peace of mind. So basically, let's say you got a new fancy sports car and uh, you're afraid to drive it because it's you don't want to crash it. But maybe you want to get some insurance for the sports car so that, that they'll, if something happens, they'll it'll be covered. And then now you have peace of mind and you, can, you don't have to worry about it. And also, uh, learning curve. Oh, yeah, been there, done that. Uh, been there, done that companion. Been there, done that is a, co a really common phrase in English. You ever heard it? Yes. I heard it in a song, I guess. Been there, done that. It was in the line of his song, I guess. Oh, really? I remember. So what do you think it means? It just somebody... We have been there and we have done that. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty literal. Again, so how can we... So what's another way to say this sentence? Or at least the first part. Uh, an what's another way? Person. Yeah, an experienced person. Uh huh. Uh huh. Someone who's accustomed to it, right? Someone who's used to it. He's used to it or she's used to it. Been there, done that. Number two, pick a destination. Get a guidebook. Some authors rate tips uh, for scenic quality. Very helpful for picking a prime trail. Their five-star locales usually attract crowds, so don't expect solitude unless you visit midweek. Uh, websites, magazines, hiking websites are abound and can be good resources, though uh, info reliability can vary. Books and magazines are solid sources, and some national parks and forests maintain online trail condition reports, too. And ask well-traveled friends. They can point you to destinations that match your tastes and abilities. Uh, REI staffers are also a good resource. Number three, how long, how far? 
Time and distance. A one-night trip makes sense for beginners. Keep the round-trip distance less than 10 miles or less. It's reassuring to know that civilization is not too far out of reach. Base camp trips. Got two nights? Consider this. Set up camp on night one and use day two to relax or take a day hike to go somewhere nice, then return to your camp at night. This way, you'll just tote a full backpack on just two days. Be ready physically. Prep hikes. Prior to your big trip, take some training hikes. You'll need to be in reasonably good condition to attempt a backpacking trip. Choose hikes with elevation changes that challenge you. Uh, and test carry a full backpack. For training, load up a multi-night backpack with a tent, sleeping bag, and a pad, plus your 10 essentials, which you'll see below, and tote it on a day hike. It's a good reality check before your first overnighter. A good reality check. What does that mean? Mm. That you are unsure that you uh, got prepared. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not uh, your dreams, but uh, really, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. He's just like, well, I think it'll be okay, but you don't know for sure. So, and if you, uh, if you, if you go for a long hike with this heavy backpack without testing it out, then you're gonna get a real reality check. Like, whoa, I guess I wasn't, uh, wasn't uh, being, uh, you know, wasn't prepared. I wasn't being logical. I wasn't. I wasn't uh, doing it right. Um, okay, and then gear. Here's the ten essentials. Um, da, 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 da. Oh wow, they even have a link to it. Let's see what they have. Then we gotta go. Oh, there's even a video. Uh, navigation, sun protection, insulation, extra probably, illumination, first aid, right, for health, like, right, fire, repair kit, nutrition, hydration, and shelter. Uh, I'm sorry, we don't have more time to look at that. We uh, we were chatting a lot, and the class got a little late. But, um, so uh, now my question is that we're going to be about. So what do you think? What would you wear? Uh, do you think if you went on a day hike, on a hike somewhere? What kind Maybe of clothes? Some flexible wear mm -hmm. for the climate change. For example, since I'm on the mountain and. Uh, Temperature uh, rose and la fell, 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 fell <laughs> rapidly. Uh -huh. So some flexible for is good. Mm -hmm. Okay, flexible. What else? Jacket, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, jacket. It's nice to have layers. We didn't get to this point, but but uh, uh, like onion, like an onion. Yes, yes. So like today, I'm wearing layers. I have this weird Grover-looking shirt. And I was wearing this at the beginning of the class, and, and I took it off. And I'm going to put it back on again, like an old grandmother. And uh, <laughs> and uh, it's good to have layers. It's that's because you are old. I have old it's a cardigan. Yes, it's a cardigan. That's true. Look at that texture. It's like Grover. Well, you don't know. Sesame Street. Anyway, um, yes, this is a. I've had this for like. 15 years, and I bought it from a thrift store. It was already used, so it might be about 40 years old. I don't know. Yes, I am an wow. old. Wow. Mm, maybe. I have a lot of really old clothes that I buy and wear. Um, so, um, well, this art, so read this article if you're interested in backpacking. Read the whole thing. It just gives you some more tips and points. Um, and maybe it'll help you change the way you uh, uh, you take your future trips. Is there anything that you learned in the f in the little bit we looked at that that you might uh, apply on your next trip? Anything that you might change next time? 
they didn't say uh, what I haven't known. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory if you've done it before. And this is written more for first-timers, beginners, uh, newbies. <clears throat> Anyone have any hiking trips in the future or backpacking plans? No. Well, uh, maybe choosing shoes is also important. Because... Oh, very important. Yeah. Shoes. Yeah, shoes. Very important. Your feet. You only have two feet. And uh, your feet also affect your knees and your back and everything. So if you have bad shoes, then you can really hurt yourself. So they should be good quality. Spend some money on them. Don't get cheap shoes. Get something that are that are made for uh, supporting your supporting your feet, supporting your legs and your back, and uh, that have good grip. If you're going to be doing some kind of climbing or anything like that, or if you're just walking, even in the city. It's important to have <clears throat> the right shoes because if they don't support you, then you can get hurt. And you can have problems when you're old, like me. I don't have problems. I'm just saying, when you're really old, you might have uh, back problems or something if you've been wearing the wrong kind of shoes. Medicine also important. Yes, it's good for me. Yeah. They said a first aid kit was one of the 10 things, right? First aid kit, that's like. What's in it? Does anyone know what, what's in a first aid kit? Yes. Band aid or yeah, band -aid. basic medicine. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Maybe like a bandage and some scissors that cut the bandage if you have like a cut. Maybe cotton balls, maybe uh, antiseptic, like a, some kind of a alcohol to put on your on your wound, you know, what do you call it? The uh, uh, whatever the word is, the, I guess some kind of alcohol that you put on, yeah. To sterilize, like a sterilizer, if you get scraped, scraped or cut. So um, that's all the time we have for today. But um, it was good to see everyone, and thanks for joining. And um, and yeah, click on that uh, link if you want to learn more about it. It's it's a good uh, good idea. So our next class is coming up right now, and it's about. Um, Anthony Bourdain, and if you've been in any of my food classes, you'll know that I sometimes like to show videos of this guy, Anthony Bourdain, and he's one of my favorite guys to talk about food. And we're going to learn about the man, Anthony Bourdain. We're not going to learn about food so much, but we're going to learn about the guy and what his story is. He's a chef, and he's a, a TV host. He's been hosting all these food shows for years and years. He's a writer. He's written books about food. So... I like him a lot, and uh, we're going to learn about him, and we'll watch a video, too. So that's our class. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. See you. Bye. Thank you very much. See you. Bye. 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 Bye.